In this short video, we're going to talk about inverse Laplace transforms. So the idea is that if you want to run the Laplace transform in, inver in reverse, just like you would do it with the inverse of a function, so you would apply the inverse Laplace transform to a function of s, and again, by the convention is that we would use an uppercase letter for the input to the inverse Laplace transform, and we would get the corresponding function f of t, whose Laplace transform is uppercase f of s. So we know, for example, that the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s, so the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s should equal 1. Or the second one we looked at is that the Laplace transform of t is 1 over s squared, so the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared is going to be t. Or if we looked at the Laplace transform of e to the negative 3t being 1 over s plus 3, then the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 3 would have to be e to the negative 3t. So we're just undoing the Laplace transform. So here are some of the tables. Uh, we knew the formula for the Laplace transform of t to the power of n was n squared over s raised to the power of n plus 1. And so the inverse Laplace transform of that expression would be t to the power of n, and so on. So for all of those in the table, again, you don't really need to memorize this table if you've already memorized the table of the Laplace transforms. It's just how it's un the Laplace transform can be undone. Uh, the inverse Laplace transform is also a linear transform. What does that mean? Again, if you have a sum of functions, you can break it up and take the inverse Laplace transform of each one of those terms individually. And if they have a constant multiplier, you can factor that constant multiplier out in front of the transform. So let's look at a couple of examples. Here we'd like to find the inverse Laplace transform of 3 over s to the fourth. So that looks like uh, t to the power of n, right? Because uh, the inverse Laplace transform of, or let's put it this way, the Laplace transform of t to the n is n factorial over s to the power of n plus 1. So n plus 1 in our example would be uh, 4. So n would be 3. And so what I'd like to have is 3 factorial, not just 3, but 3 factorial on top. And this is where we use the linearity, where we can say, well, what I'd like to do is just multiply top and bottom by 3 factorial. I can move the 3 factorial inside the transformation, move the 3 by itself out in front of the transformation. Then I'll have 3 factorial over s to the power 4. That's exactly what my formula wants. And then I'll have some constant out in front of the transformation. And so um, now I've got, uh, this is going to be the inverse Laplace transform, which will equal t cubed, and that's just going to be multiplied by 3 over 3 factorial, which is just simplifies to 1 half. So my inverse Laplace transform of 3 over s to the power of 4 is 1 half t cubed. All right, in part b, we have something that looks very different, does not look like a power of t, but it does look like sine of kt, where k would be the square root of the constant term in the denominator. In this case, we have 8, so k would be the square root of 8. When I square it, then I'll get 8. Um, and so 
we know the, the value of k, which we say has to be radical 8. So we need radical 8 on top. And that's not an issue, again, because we can use the linearity and multiply top and bottom, or radical 8 over itself, a form of 1. We move the radical 8 inside the inverse Laplace transform, so that will fit our formula. And then we'll just have a multiplying factor of 1 over radical 8. And so the inverse Laplace transform then of radical 8 over s squared plus 8 is going to be sine of radical 8t. That's multiplied by 1 over radical 8. And we can clean that up a little bit. Radical 8 is actually 2 radical 2. And then 1 over radical 8 will simplify to radical 2 over 4. All right, so we need to remember some techniques from algebra uh, to be able to work with uh, some of these. Uh, in this case, in this example, what we're going to do is break up negative 2s plus 6 over s squared plus 4 into uh, two different fractions and then handle each fraction separately. I also went ahead and said I'm going to factor out a negative 2 from the first term. This gets us something that looks exactly like uh, the formula for the that's going to give us um, cosine of kt. And over here, I'm going to get something that looks like sine of kt. I didn't factor out the 6, and we'll see why. In the first one, um, the inverse transform of s over s squared plus 4 is going to, or k squared, is cosine of kt. So if we use k equals 2 here, this is going to give me exactly negative 2 times cosine of 2t. Now, in the uh, second inverse Laplace transform, uh, I'd like to have k on top. Remember, k equals 2. So what I'll do is I'll break up the 6 as 2 times 3. I'll factor the 3 out in the front, leave the 2 inside the transform so it fits in the formula. And so, um, all right, so I broke the 6 up into 2 times 3. 3 is out in the front. 2 is inside the transform. And... So I get negative 2 cosine of 2t plus 3 sine of 2t. In this example, we're going to use a different technique from algebra. Uh, notice that the uh, to use this, we need to have the degree of the numerator smaller than the degree of the denominator. And I can use a partial fraction decomposition. So here we have three linear factors, so we're just going to get um, a constant over each factor and then take the sum. And I'm going to go through all the details of solving this. Um, I think that most of you are already proficient on this. So we get our, our values for A, B, and C. Now notice that each term then looks like a constant times 1 over s minus a for some different value of a. And so we notice that the Laplace transform of e to the a t is 1 over s minus a, or the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a is e to the a t. So I can go ahead and make note of that. So I'm going to have these a, B, and C coefficients multiplied by the inverse Laplace transform of each of those fractions. And that gives me my final answer because the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over S minus 1 is E to the T. Inverse Laplace transform of 1 over S minus 2 is E to the 2T. And the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over S plus 4 is E to the negative 4T. So remember, it's a minus a 
And so whenever you see a minus in the, so a minus in front of the constant in the denominator, then that would be a positive exponent for an e to the 2t or e to the t. But if you have a plus 4, it ends up being a negative 4t exponent.